Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. Today's slide comes to us from a workshop that was uh, I did recently. Participants sent it to me. And it's a good example of financial analysis that's done uh, with a couple of different parameters or factors, dimensions. Let's take a look at this slide. So here's the original slide, and uh, what they're doing is they're doing a uh, some analysis on what would happen if uh, to a base situation if we changed two different parameters. So in this particular table that you see here, there's factor one that they're changing, and then there's a decreased rate scenario. So they're changing the the rate as well. And what they do is is they uh, talk about what happens if we change factor one, what happens if we change the rate and then what happens if we do both. So this is uh, really most of the time it's a table that's taken out of Excel and we run all the numbers because Excel is great for doing the calculations and we simply pick it up and drop it into our presentation. The problem is is that we really have a struggle to try to explain to the audience what the impact of the different factors is. This slide also doesn't have any sort of a, a headline that summarizes what the point is. It simply says the client group analysis uh, continued. This Yes, this was one of many slides that they had for, for this analysis. So what we need to do is we need to make this very clear for the audience as to what is the result of the analysis. Anytime you're doing analysis, it's not about the fact that you did the work. It's about what that work means to your audience. So with that in mind, let's focus on what we could do. Here's the after slide. We did our sensitivity analysis and we looked at two factors, factor one and the rate, and we found that the greatest impact is due to a decrease in the rate. So what we've got is a, we've got a matrix here, and uh, along the top we're going to change factor one. One hundred percent means base case. Uh, we can change it either by twenty five percent lower, twenty five percent higher, and on the side we've got what happens if we change the rate. So let's look at if we keep the rate the same, what happens if we change factor one? So if we uh, have seventy five percent of factor one, um, what we find is is that the present value goes down by 10%. If we increase factor 1 by 25%, the present value goes up by 9%. So factor 1 does have some impact uh, if we keep the rate the same. It's not a large impact, but it does have some impact. Now let's take a look at what if we decrease the rate. If we don't change factor 1, but we decrease the rate, we see a drop in present value of 81%, a very significant impact when we haven't even changed factor 1. If we decrease the rate and we reduce factor 1 to 75%, we see that there is an impact of changing factor 1, but the magnitude of that impact is not nearly as much as decreasing the rate. And similarly, if we increase factor 1 to 125%, we see that the present value goes down by 72%. So it mitigates a bit of the decrease of rate, but really not all that much. So it's clear that when we are doing sensitivity analysis for these two particular items, factor one and the rate, the rate is by far the biggest issue that we need to take care of. So you can see what I did here was I reorganized the analysis into a matrix. In this case, it's a two by three matrix because that's what made sense in terms of the what we were doing. And now we can group and discuss by group the information. When I was building it on the slide, I built it so that I could discuss each item one by one. And when you're doing this, this is actually a table, which is very easy to do in PowerPoint, with a couple of uh, graphics added there to highlight the direction of the change and gives people a good indication visually. But when you're building this, what I did is I've, I've used a technique of uh, actually there's a box over each of those numbers in the graphic and then to build it I simply do an exit animation remove the box. And that's a, a technique that you can use whenever you're building a table in PowerPoint. So what are some of the lessons that we can learn when we are showing comparisons on two dimensions? This is financial analysis. It doesn't have to be, but uh, it's a common one. First lesson. Instead of simply listing, use a matrix because a matrix allows you to group the, the, the different dimensions 
and make it easier for people to understand. If you've got a list, people are then trying to go back and forth in the list to try to interpret it. When you're using a table, certainly put the numbers in, but also use a visual. What I like is those, those small arrows, an up green arrow to show a positive direction, positive impact, and a, a down red arrow to show a, a negative impact. The colors and the direction of the arrows are universal indicators, and it helps people interpret the information that they're seeing in the table. One of the things you need to do is before you start putting the numbers in, you need to explain how the matrix is organized. So you notice when I, I did it in the after slide, I explained here's the parameters we're changing across and here's the parameters we're changing down. People need to understand how the matrix is organized before they see the numbers. If you put everything up at once, and then try to explain it, people are not listening to your explanation, they're trying to figure out the numbers. That's why it's also important to build the results one by one so that you can reinforce the point, the conclusion, whatever the headline is for this particular slide. So you notice I talked about here's the impact of factor one and there is some impact but then talked about the greater impact when we change the rate. So build it piece by piece so that it makes sense. Whenever you're comparing a couple of dimensions, especially doing financial analysis, use these lessons to make your slides clear. If you want more information on the book, go to www.visualsliderevolution.com. For more information on my training, my consulting, video, and other resources, go to my website at www.thinkoutsidetheslide.com. This has been Dave Parody with another Slide Makeover video podcast.